Hey, I'm Stephanie with ABC News Digital. Um, I'm outside the Stonewall Inn in downtown New York. And the Stonewall is considered the birthplace of the gay rights movement. And just yesterday, it was dedicated as a national monument. And you see outside here, there's tributes to the Orlando shooting victims. But there's also a lot of tributes to love here. And we have a special guest today. I'm with um, singer, songwriter, artist extraordinaire, Mary Lambert. Hi. Mary, welcome. <laughs> hey. Um, so Mary's going to talk to us about some of the new music that she's creating um, and what, what you've been up to lately. So Yeah. I mean, it's always like it's such a strange time, you know, because like I'm promoting a single, but it's also in such a time that's so um, tragic for so many. So in some ways I'm like, is this tactless? Like, is this, do I have a place here? Is this important? And I have to like remind myself like to be active in the gay community and to be vocal about love and who you are is essential to moving forward. And, um, and so, yes, I'm promoting a single and it's okay. Like I wrote it with my girlfriend. It's out of love. Like, and, um, it's called hang out with you. And, um, I'm really proud of it. It's it's my first um, independent project, you know, moving without a, a major label. So in some way, it feels like I'm breaking new ground for myself. It's a little scary because it's all on my shoulders, but I um, I, I I love it. It's really fun. Uh, my girlfriend produced it and engineered it, and um, it'll come out on July 8th. Yeah. Was it hard to kind of mix the business and pleasure of working with your girlfriend or was it those creative like button heads? Well, when we, um, I actually, she was on The Voice and I reached out to her because I was like, oh my God, I want to write with this woman. She's amazing. She's like, I was so inspired by her. I'm still so inspired by her. And we met in person and it was like, oh, we're not going to write music. <laughs> so three years later, we're finally writing a song. <laughs> and. Um, She's been, uh, we've been doing quite a few different, you know, little things we've been working on and this is the first thing to be released and um, she makes an appearance in the video and it's just such a joy to write with your partner, you know, and I don't like writing choruses and she's great at writing choruses. She doesn't like lyrics. I love lyrics and it's just a, it's a lovely song. Yeah. Did you feel, the oh, same love obviously blew up and kind of shot you to yeah. instant fame. Did that put a different sort of pressure on you when you approach writing and your creative like element now? Yeah, I, I'm. What a what a blessing that was to to have that be your first thing. You know, like I, I <laughs> it felt very sacred and very divine. I I was really exploring living in sort of that intersection of being a Christian and a lesbian in my writing and I didn't quite know how I was going to express that in my art and literally the song fell onto my lap. I, there was no like vetting process. It was just like, hey, do you want to do this song? And I was like, whoa, this is what I've been wanting to do for so long. And um, it just, it, it was, we I was working three jobs at the time. I had worked 20 days straight. It was my only day off. They had two hours for me to come in and write the song and it was just, it's too, it's too divine to, to shrug it off as it not m meant to happen. It is. It was absolutely supposed to happen, and um, what a, what an honor! Like I, I just I still can't believe. Like no matter what happens, that is always going to be a part of my artistic identity. And some people, you know, I don't know what it, what that experience would be like to have a song that maybe you don't necessarily vibe with a couple years down the road. But this is such a song that's integral to my identity and um, I'll never be, I'll always be this person, I'll always be that, that identity and I'm just so lucky, like I don't know what I did to deserve that, you know. Yeah. Are you, um, are there any other collaborations in the works, like you're working with um, Michelle now, your yeah. friend, um, yeah. but with something like with Macklemore, like are you with yeah, else? actually, Macklemore's going to be on the on the next album. We've been talking about it. I'm doing a lot of actual classical composition. My background is in uh, classical work, so I'm doing a lot of orchestral arranging and having spoken word on top of it. And I, I'm I'm embracing the complexity of it and and like trusting that people will love you and understand you even if you are complex. And that's a hard. Thing to just trust fall into the world and 
but I'm trying. <laughs> is it more experimental in that way? Like, do you feel a little more licensed on this one? To Absolutely. Do yeah, especially since I'm I'm independent now. So, and I'm producing the album myself too. <laughs> I'm just doing everything. I just I'm just a control freak. Um, but <laughs> hi. <laughs> but I, uh, in that way, it feels like even if I fail, at least I've have been myself the whole time, you know, and if I succeed, then awesome. But if I feel there's no regret, you know, I really got to be who I wanted to. I got to have fun. I got to, yeah, be true to myself. And your concerts, I think, are a very cathartic experience, both for you and for the audience. Mm. What do you think is the most emotional song for you to perform? Definitely Body Love. Uh, and, and that one, it's, it's a poem about, spoke, it's a, yeah, it's a spoken word piece about body image and, um, and it's a poem I wrote when I was about 19, just sort of really trying to get down to the nitty gritty of self-destruction and why we harm ourselves and how we can shift that and what words can we say to ourselves as sort of mantras. And um, so I, every time I perform it, I find a new meaning in it or I find someone to connect with in the audience and I'm like, this person needs this. And... Um, it can be really, really emotional, even though I've been performing it for like eight or nine years now, almost every day for my whole life, but it's still so important to do. This work is important and it's, I feel so fortunate to be an artist that is, the intention behind what I do is I don't feel propelled by, you know, validation or or fame or money or anything. Like I really am propelled by messaging and like what what can I put into the world that is good? What can I do to heal? What can I do that is sacred and and is cathartic for the community, for people that need to hear something? And to be propelled in that way, it's such a, um, you can't go wrong, you know what I mean? Like I, I there's no downside. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels so so lucky. Do you feel? I mean, you're obviously like you're saying, like you're you become an inspiration for a lot of people, especially the young people in the gay community. I think who are given a voice through what you're saying. Do you wish you had that growing up, or, or did you? Did you have something that gave you that refuge? There is. I mean, that's a huge part of my compass. Is how would I feel listening to this at 17 years old? That is like always my compass. And I've been, I guess I've been out for a decade now. I've been out for 10 years. And when I came out, I was, I came out in the church. I was scared. I felt alone. I was apolog, like I was repenting to God every day. Cause I was like, I'm going to hell, I guess, you know, like for love. I don't know what that means. And, um, honestly, the first thing that that comes to mind is when Katy Perry released I Kissed a Girl and that was the first thing where I was like me too Katy Perry <laughs> you know? I was like whoa it yeah. was it was the first time that I had sort of felt that it was okay and if, I mean it's problematic in whatever whatever form it still it was a fun pop song and it did grant me this small form of peace to hear that on the radio so when we did same love and then I released the derivative of she keeps me warm I I I would pull I would have to pull over in the car because I would just start crying and not just crying because I'm like oh look at my you know look what I can do I'm on the radio it was like man if I had heard that when I was 17 I would have felt way less alone I would have felt really okay and that's why you know when I release secrets talking about mental disorders and really making sure that like destigmatizing mental illness is a part of of my journey talking about body positivity talking about it's okay to be flawed and have you know all of your whatever issues everybody's going through something because we are so we are so closely human that we forget that and the second that you can come to the table in vulnerability and say this is this is me this is myself and you people match you you'll find that you can trust someone as soon as you come with that vulnerability and it's like this instant connection and that is so valuable that's what humanity is about that's the beauty of it that's love that's that's what we're seeing i think is like this outpour of goodness of good faith i believe that people are good inherently good 
and you can see it. I mean, it's, just flo it's flooding. The goodness is flooding out. But it's not to say that there aren't rogue people that have so much internalized self-hatred and a gun. Yeah. Yeah, and as we're outside here, obviously, we mentioned Stonewall before, and you actually work with the national parks. Yeah. So what do you do with them? And like, what does this mean to you? This, to is, have this, it, kind of this is incredible. And I can't believe I'm in New York at the same time that this is, we've been talking about this. I work with the National Park Service as a Centennial Ambassador. And uh, we've been talking about this for like a year. And I was starting to be sort of on the campaign of like, yes, let's make Stonewall in a, a national landmark, a uh, national monument. And to get the news, I was like, well, I didn't have to do any work. <laughs> it just <laughs> happened. And what it, how timely, how important, how monumental for our community to have this. And in this time when I'm just, it gets so emotional, just thinking our, our spaces are so limited and our bars and our dance clubs are places that we have felt safe in our communities. And to have someone try to take that away from us feels so alienating and so inconceivable. I can't understand, our places are so limited. So to have the government and to have the National Park Service come out and say, here, here, we want we want you to have this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so gratifying. It's so important. I and I'm really I'm really proud of the government for this. I'm proud of Obama. I'm like, what a great time to be mm -hmm. alive. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that that being said, like you like I was saying, your your music is really like this safe haven for a lot of people um, that are trying to come to terms with who they are and really realize it's okay to be themselves. Um, what sort of advice do you have like for the young community out there? Like especially people who maybe are not out yet. Yeah, I mean it's scary, but the most important thing I think the thing that we're learning more and more is the visibility is so important. And especially for public figures to come out and say, I'm gay. Like it, it may seem trivial, it may seem stupid when you're like clapping for Ellen Page, but you're like, whoa, Ellen Page is gay. And like that moment for someone to stand up and be proudly who they are unabashedly give someone else a, the courage to do it themselves and to find those basic safe spaces of community where you feel loved and understood is so essential to your growth and survival and that's why you see a lot of homeless LGBT youth because they have been isolated from their homes their families don't understand their churches don't understand whatever it is finding those spaces that you belong are so essential and wherever wherever it is find your community that is like my find it is it online find it if it's not there create it make yourself known i mean i, I obviously i only know my experience for me it was really super important for me to be out right away and just like be very vocal about it for a lot of people that they, that's not a privilege that they have and i was really lucky to be in the family that i was that was so loving and understanding and I know that not everybody gets that opportunity, so I can't speak for everybody, but yeah, I know the cool. more visibility that we have, the better off we'll be. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Got a fan. <laughs> nice Thank young you. fan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So sweet. <laughs> we're actually, um, so Mary's actually going to read a piece for us, read a poetry piece for us. And I'm gonna step out of the way. I'll just wait for this wait bus for to go bus. on by when the light turns green. <laughs> but um, but yeah, your new single is coming out July 8th. July 8th. So everyone, look for, hang out with you. Hang out with you. Hang out with you. Yeah. you. July 8th. And we're all very excited to hear what you're gonna bring to us in the future. Thank you. Um, it's really been special having you here. Thank you, Steph. So I'm gonna step out of the way for now. Okay. And I'm gonna let you do your thing. I'm gonna read it on my phone because. That's what you do. Oh, okay. I get emotional thinking about it. It's called Morning Blessing. How could I deserve this goodness this morning? Oh, that it were a whale, 
something tangible to swallow me so I could lay my head down at the feet of it. I will use this carpet in my house. There is cat hair in it. I do not care. I do not care. I am so full. I am so full. I can hold you and my back. I can carry all the children. I want to be a beacon for the ghost nights that all the blessed have cried and you wake up from too. I want to kiss all the open doors. Oh, bless this. Oh, bless this hell. Oh, bless this shame. Oh, bless this hell again. Oh, that it were a whale so I could be swallowed. They said I would be a healer, but I never liked medicine, so I sang myself a tourniquet. I liked smiling and the people stopped to listen. I wanted to give and give and give and oh bless this shame, bless that hell, bless the wind that broke the boat. How could I hold all of this and not be pierced from goodness? How could I not be full after I have emptied myself at the gates of the end? How could I live rationally when there is everything? I can't, I mustn't. Thank you so much Thank for being you. with us. Uh, it was great to talk with you. And uh, we're going to sign off for now. I'm Stephanie, and this is Mary Lambert. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie.